Hello and welcome to Candid with Candy. It is, of course, your favorite podcast, if I do say so myself. I am your host, V Candy Majlamini. And uh, hey, the fact that you're here, it means that we are already quoting Andy. So do the right thing, subscribe. That is, if you have not subscribed. And also, can our subscriber, uh, please press on to that notification bell so that Patino drop our content. You don't get to miss any of the content that we drop because trust me this year it's going to be so amazing so today ah, i'm just so super excited and stoked uh, because i've been a fan of this huge personality for a very long time she is an international singer and songwriter pl platinum selling um artist and uh, she was the lead singer of um the platinum selling group the noises and uh, also she's just been doing her own thing pushing the envelope and just representing the country's flag hi her name is shingai shingai shaniwa hey welcome hi, candy thank you for having me what an amazing introduction Thank you. <laughs> you are looking amazing. You're looking so beautiful. So are you. I feel like we, for those who can't see, there's a lot of colorful um, things happening. There's pinks and turquoise that you're wearing. Yes. I feel like we're complimenting each other. And I absolutely love your style, hey. Thank you. But um, before we start um, and, you know, to just get into the detail of the interview, I just want to dig into your personality and confirm or deny if this is true. So you are decisive. You are strong-willed, hard-working, uh, endowed with excellent intuition. Wow. Um, yes, and um, also a variety of talents. Yes. But then your challenge sometimes is that you don't know when to stop. Yes, I definitely feel like I was born on a mission. I'm here in a mission, and I'm really grateful to be able to use those gifts, talents, and blessings that you talked about to achieve that mess that that mission. So yeah, it's definitely hard for me to just turn the lights off and go to sleep at night. <laughs> so I got it right. You really, yeah, spot on, spot on. September one, that's your birthday. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't do the whole runner-up thing. It's first or first. Oh, me. Wow. I, I, was born, I was born on the 5th of September myself. Oh my gosh, you're yes, a Virgo. I am. Come on, let's get it. I feel that's definitely a, um, um, a common Virgo trait with the hard working, attention yes. to detail. We, lo we love to work. It's just a thing, something that we, we do. And you, you have been pushing, you have been doing that. And uh, we are so pleased as a nation to be associated with your brand. Shingi wow. Uriso <laughs> Kostina. Oh, wow. this you is, are a soko. The accolades just keep on coming. Yes. It's, I'm, I'm so proud to, you know, to do my best to um, remind the world what our beautiful people um, have to offer. So, yeah, I'm a proud soko and my mum's a shumba and I'm learning more about uh, the totems. But there's just so many, so many amazing um, things that Zimbabwe has to offer culturally. What do they say is peculiar about your, your totem? Um, well, the sokos, like my branch manager. That's what, what they, they, that's what they call us, you know. Um, and you can, arguably, you can see why. Uh, I can see there's a lot of um, powerful, ambitious, uh, successful, talented sokos in the um, in the uh, international spotlight. And there's something about um, our agility, our ability to adapt. Uh, and they say, you know, that sometimes you take on your animal guiding kind of uh, um, energies from the animal. So for me, being a soko helps on stage because it means I've got that I'm agile, I'm mobile, I'm hostile. I mean, we, we have watched <laughs> you on stage and the yes. energy is just impeccable. You are yeah. there. Yeah, the monkey comes out on stage. Um, <laughs> I think people saw that at the Winky D concert recently when they, they weren't expecting me to bust a cartwheel in the middle of a song. So, yeah. That's the kind of thing I guess you'll you'll get used to from from this soccer. When I'm on stage, I give it my all, and I do like to leap about and you know deliver the musical message, you know, in in other ways as well. It just the, the, the music just takes me, and and I just go for it. It's it's beautiful. Like um, when you are on stage, you are you know you're just free. There is just so much freedom that you are articulating Thank through you. your performances, and um, you're not inhibited in any way. And I absolutely love that. Saka Kumusha, have you been there? Do you go there um, to the rural areas and experience that setting as well? Kumusha is my 
happy place. Anyone who knows me can testify to that. Um, if I haven't gone to Kamosha within a few days or a week of landing, I don't actually feel like I'm home yet. Uh, so yeah, my mum's uh, Kamosha is in uh, Seke. And um, Kwaseke. Kwaseke, yes. Okay. And we we live by a beautiful, beautiful river with all these amazing, huge balancing rocks. We even have um, ancient cave paintings on our um, it, it, on, on our land, and um, we we grow a lot of amazing fruits, vegetables, the trees. The kids the kids are amazing. The music is there. My dad's kumusha is um, in Chishawasha. Okay. So I've yet to um, continue to deepen my connection with that place because my father passed away when I was 10. So um, every time I come back, I you know um, I meet a uh, new family members and people that can kind of, you know, introduce me more to the Chishawasha side of things. But um, I have been to Seke this week on Tuesday oh, really? and I loved wow. it. Yeah, it was awesome. So you go that often? Well, I, I literally got here, I think it was uh, maybe 13, 14 days ago. I got here on New Year's Eve, did the uh, Winky D rehearsal, oh, so you got did here the right show. on time for the Winky show. Oh yeah, just oh. in time. And then um, I think it was about yeah, maybe five, six days after that, we went to Kumusha. Okay, so do can you be like on the on the, um, the whole fire, do the whole fire thing, Uchibika, like Ulpa yes. Moto, can you do it? Oh, my days. Okay, so the whole cooking on the fire thing, um, I'm still like st slightly traumatized. So when I was about, um, yeah, when I was about 10 and actually, you know, my father passed away, we, we went to go and stay um, for a little bit, you know, to, to kind of heal those wounds and bond yes. with Gogo in Malawi. Uh, so yeah, Gogo's from mom's, Malawi. Uh, your dad's mom's mom. Your mom's mom. Yes, oh, okay. Yeah. And see, um, I feel like a lot of us are what I call Bantu remixes. You know, as a musician, I often put musical terms to things that are hard to describe without people getting emotional. So when you say, you know, you have different cultural influences from the Bantu, sometimes people are like, oh, what does that mean? Do you belong here? Do you belong there? Personally, I've, I'm Pan-Africanist. I feel like we all belong wherever we want to go in the, in the Bantu lands because a lot of these borders are very recent. However, with these borders, given Given, I would actually be Zimbabwean, Malawian, and Mozambican. That Bantu remix, you call <laughs> it the Bantu, Bantu remix. remix. It's, a beautiful, it's a beautiful mixture. And so when I went, uh, when I was 10 to live with Gogo, I was so like keen to like fit in with all my cousins because they were so cool. They could jump, they could run, they walked 10 kilometers to, to school. They could um, climb mango tree really, really quickly. And I thought I was somebody coming with, with a pair of trainers and a tracksuit. I soon realized that was not what it meant to be a cool kid in oh, Malawi no. at the time. So I saw what my cousins are doing and they would light the fire and they would cook the what we call we call it in Sima um, in Malawi. What so, is that? Sadza. Or Sadza. Mm, okay. Sadza, yeah. So many African countries have their own version, but I feel like we all have this staple staple starches, right? So in, in Malawi, Sadza is called um it's called in Sima. So when um they went they went to cook, I was like, no, I can do it. I want to give it a go. And um, they were like, mm. they looked at me and were like, who is this city girl? <laughs> Who's this little, you know, this 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 girl from London thinking that she can actually like cook and simmer? But they let me do it, and unfortunately, I got properly scolded. Oh, the, no. the cooking pot bubbled and bubbled all over my left knee, and um, I hope I'm not traumatizing so anybody. Traumatic. You know, no, it's actually it's actually uh, it actually turned out to be a nice story in the end. But anyway, so so the cooking pot bubbled over, and then like it just dolloped the hot and seam I went all over my 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 little knee, little shing's little knee. And um and I had like third degree burns. <laughs> oh no, Shingi, you're laughing now, but then it sounds so hectic, to, right? Th these things are character building, I you know. know. I also have my mark from just being naughty and playing with fire Co when I was young. Yeah. Right? yeah. That's it, playing with the fire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and funny enough it was really um a little silver lining on that was that I actually uh, I actually had um, a brand uh, deal. Well, I had um, a, an endorsement um, uh, opportunity with a company uh, in the in the UK called Nurture, and they really wanted to work with me because they heard me talk about some of the because it's it, 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 it's a skincare brand, so they're talking about skin positivity and women being comfortable in their skin. And as somebody that was representing the melanated female, they were asking me about how I feel about body positivity and and what makes me feel comfortable in my skin. And I said, well, I used to. Um, 
be really, really nervous about wearing shorts because of this scar from playing with fire. Yes. And they were like, oh, you still have the scar. Well, actually it's faded now, but this product that I was actually promoted, promoting was actually um, something that women were using for stretch marks, eczema, and scar, scars, right? Yes. And so, yeah, as me representing my experience, they were like, we want you to be completely honest and tell us about that. And I shared my story on it, on all across socials and Insta, and it, it got so much love. People were like, wow. oh my gosh, every women have, a lot of us have scars yes. that we're told, you know, uh, you know, maybe disfiguring or like unattracted, unattractive according to beauty standards and you I have to now, cover them in clothes or you know just different yeah, things yes but, but that ended up being um a silver lining because i got an amazing branding deal and got to make uh encourage so many women to feel comfortable about their scars you know everybody has battle scars and a woman came to me and was like you know what i used to hate my stretch marks on my belly from my pregnancy but now my little boy calls them he's like mom they are tiger stripes wow so me I I always find a way for art to um, renew a situation that could have been traumatic and turn it into something poetic, beautiful, and to, to just re re reclaim your confidence. Wow, and it's such a beautiful perspective, really, right? to um, turn <laughs> lemons, literally, literally, into <laughs> lemonade. Exactly, that's what we're yeah. doing, that's what we're doing. So let's talk about um, this Shingi girl who grew up in South London, born and bred, um, and you say that your community had a whole mixture of um, different Africans, dia yeah, diasporans. African diasporans. That's right, yeah. yes, and Caribbean diasporans as well. And Caribbean diasporans. Like, how was that um, involvement with those people and how did it influence this artist that we see? Um, yeah. it, it was a very strong and nurturing community to be part of because it meant that, um, you know, people came together in the face of... Um, really brutal issues that they were facing then on an even greater scale. Issues that a lot of communities in the diaspora still face, such as, you know, racism, uh, gender-based violence, um, ostracization, the glass ceiling. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, there was a lot more, a lot more poverty because I guess you had, you know, that first generation of a lot of um, uh, African diasporans who a lot of them had left countries that were in places that were in conflict. So there was a lot of healing to do in those communities. And that healing was often achieved by sharing the musical culture. So, you know, um, uh, in my area of South London, there was a lot of uh, Jamaicans, Trinidadians, Bayesians, Nigerians, Ghanaians, um, later on Kenyans. There was, you know, there, there, there was just a lot of a lot of black people finding this beautiful commonality. A lot of blacks and Asians, actually. In the diaspora, growing up, we really, really cling on to our blackness. We celebrate it, we're loud, we're proud about it. And I'm just really, really keen to see how um, us in the diaspora can just co-celebrate the positive things about what we are with people back home, because I know that people back home have st are still in the place where a lot of these uh, challenges are happening. And I love how you're passionate about this um, African story. And uh, it's quite intriguing that you're also not assimilated into it for someone who was also, you know, part of the mainstream. Yeah. Um, how difficult was it for you to just also be there as a black woman, as you were uh, the, the lead singer for the Noisettes? How was that experience for you, Shing Shingi? Well, um, not only not only being the lead singer, but also being the bass player and the bass player and playing yes. guitar mm. and a songwriter. So, like I said, already <laughs> you're black, you're female, you're confident in your. I was. I'm confident in my mission of what I want that creativity to do, and it's something that was rare, if not unseen at all in that space. So yeah, I had to um, find so much eloquence and patience to assert my right to be there. And actually I had to remind them that if it hadn't been for the contribution, and I still have to, sadly, I have to remind a lot of people in those spaces that if it had not been for the contribution of black culture, black musical culture, um, 
whether that's from Africa, the Caribbean and other indigenous places in the world, you would not have pop music because really mainstream pop music is comprised of the spine of African music. And we're talking, you know, there's no soul. You wouldn't have jazz. You wouldn't have rock and roll. You wouldn't have guitar music. You wouldn't have, um, you know, hip hop. You wouldn't have, you know, jazz. There are so many genres, UK, garage, funky, house, you know, there, there, there are so many amazing um, cultural, uh, cultural phenomena that, you know, are enjoyed financially by the white dominated Western world that actually are coming from our talent. Mm. So I had no choice, Candy. I'm not gonna have all of this talent coursing through my CNA, not just from Gogo, but from a lot of the incredible black females, female musicians. That came before you. Hey, yeah. I'm standing yeah. on some shoulders. That's Did you always goal. have to maybe fight twice as hard in spaces for you to get acknowledged? I don't think you can even fight twice because like I said, you've already got the female, one, black, two, ridiculously talented in the sense that you don't just have contemporary music skills to offer, but you have in your bones the ancient traditions of music. So there's a lot of like my contemporary friends who are artists who are coming from a very much, they know about music today, but they don't have the references, the ancient references that give my voice and give my songwriting even more depth and you know, even more so. And then obviously there's, yeah, being female. You know, and then obviously being called, you know, uh, a child of immigrants or, so there's, you, you can't really count the amount of uh, words that sometimes get added before they actually say you're an artist. It's like, you know, when you do something right, you know, you're, uh, you know, uh, an English born in South London, British, you know, black artist. But when, but, but, but when you're not doing, um, things that the way they want you to do or, you know, following the, you know, the, the, the status quo, then, you know, she's, she's, she's a child of immigrants. She's from, you know, Zimbabwean born parents, you know, that had to flee and come to That's the crazy. UK yeah, yeah. needing this, needing that. When we know that, you know, what is the UK without, you know, I don't even really need to go into that. Right. So yeah, there was a lot of, um, having to fight, <laughs> but in a very delicate, eloquent, you know, yeah. as I, I'll quote Grace Jones and she says, this is my voice, my weapon of choice. So I so never you, had you're to fighting argue. with your art, you were using that as your weapon, your art, art and your- Art is the best yeah. way to achieve poetic justice. Mm, poetic and justice. Poetic yeah. justice yeah. is what we are now seeing play out in the contemporary space. And I'm so happy to be a big part of leading that charge, not just, you know, creatively through my art and through my music, but by my presentation, by being a natural hair icon, by all of these other things. You had to, I had to fight for the way my image was gonna be portrayed in yes. meetings. <sighs> Is she allowed to cut her natural God-given Afro into a heart shape? Oh, wow, what a scandal. And you were not even, you're so daring. It's actually when I think about it now. I'm like, like, wow. I to send an email to, to ask for permission. To do what? To present myself as God and the goddesses in my lineage made me with natural hair. Can you imagine having to sort of like ask What is the other alternative or what was the standard? Well, the standard when I, uh, the standard that a lot of um, women of color felt um, coerced to do because those were the beauty standards that were allowed to be celebrated in the Western media would be have straight hair 90% uh, of the time, um, you know, and if you are dark, you know, try to, you know, um, be okay with the fact that if you have a photo shoot, you're most likely gonna be photoshopped afterwards. Oh, and you look different, so, yeah. A tone Oh, that was brighter. happening a lot, yes. It was happening a lot to a lot of dark-skinned women uh, kind of 10 to 15 years ago where you would be like, hang on a minute, that's that's Lauren Hill. How come she looks or, or that's, you know, so, so we've also had to bear with the, not bear with, but 
we we some of us got tired of bearing with them and expect and 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 expecting them to see our beauty for what it was and we actually had to had to assert and say hey uh, my manager can you talk to you know the label or the publicist and you know like sometimes my mom would be like you know that doesn't look like you one uncle like you know is that after being photoshopped yeah photoshopped or you know having to say i don't want to go and put you know um chemicals in my hair because it's causing me health problems or you know for a lot of us you know maybe it burns your scalp there's now a lot of proven um statistics that have now shown the damage that a lot of those chemicals obviously things are changing in the beauty industry now they have to because we are the beauty industry's biggest clients in no. certain aspects of it so <laughs> they have to right yeah. because they need the black pound but at that time you know so that, they were that's putting how many years in, ago we're talking about it's still happening now yeah. in the beauty industry but it was happening a lot more i'd say 5 10 years ago where we felt a, a lot of black women felt pressured to yes. adhere and conform to western white beauty standards so you know i've always just try to just try to you know tell myself that i'm doing the right thing i also grew up with a lot of amazing females that inspired me that did the right thing that i would you know kind of just you know like i said people like lauren hill people people like lauren hill people like nina simone have have contributed to changing legislation in the civil rights music mm. if they can do that and you know i'm i'm you know i am i've always had a slight fearlessness to me not in all aspects of my life don't get it twisted on a per, uh, in other personal elements maybe i don't have this confidence but where it comes to this gift yes. i don't play around you're unapologetic so about it so many people yeah. don't even have this gift or they have it and it's wasted it's squandered or they don't have the confidence to to use it and enjoy it for what it is and for and for the spoils of that to um to trickle back into where that came from just feel like it's a very ubuntu thing for us to use our gifts and talents to go back into the communities that have fed us that's 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 ubuntu yes it is absolutely oh shinge i i'm just like drawn into the conversation and uh, just hearing you speak passionately you know about some of the troubles that are not really spoken about you know from your lived experience and it must have been so difficult but then you you're strong you managed yeah. to sell albums millions upon millions you know of copies and in a community and society you know that was not as easy right yeah it's true but yeah. now um i wouldn't change that for the world because you know um you know like that that like they say even in you know even in certain you know a religious books before revival can happen you have to have restoration and i think culture is a big part of the restoration of dignity of the restoration of our whole story because like i said like you know these challenges or colonialism or slavery or um they are not the in, you know chima manga and gozi adichi talks about the dangers of a single story our story is not just the negative stuff so i'm i i think i'm i was i'm happy that i just i i said you know what let me go first I'll go first. You know when no one wants to like you have to pick a straw. I was like let I'll go first because I have it in my bones because I come from um a culture of a lot of strong people and like I said a lot of freedom fighters. Your you parents know, so your parents were freedom fighters. Not just for mm. me when I say the child of freedom fighters I want to just kind of I want to re just try and re reiterate something. For me being a child of freedom fighters means all the freedom fighters across the black lineage. Kujinswa I'm talking about freedom fighters in the civil rights music because I'm inspired by the African American experience and the music there because we are we are related I'm a very very big believer in Ubuntu and that we come from a very very shared family not just a you know even though we come from a technically shared gene pool that means family right black people yes. we're mitochondrial beautiful eve gene right so when i say i'm a proud daughter of freedom fighters i mean i also mean people like um you know people like you know 
Josephine Baker did a lot during the, you know, the Second World War to, you know, fight for the for, 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 for the fights of, she used her creativity to fight for the rights of women and African, African-American women. There are people like Winnie Mandela. How is she, she she's also my aunt in Ubuntu. I'm also her daughter. Yeah. So when I say I'm the proud daughter of freedom fighters, I don't just specifically mean the nuclear family in the Western. You mean even the, the Bantu way. remix? Come on, let's <laughs> let's let's reintroduce proudly the way that family means to us in terms of our grandparents' generation. Mm -hmm. Some of us may have lost that language, but I think we know what we mean when we say we are the daughters of. Absolutely. So let's talk about your recent body of work. Um, you were part of the FIFA World Cup African song. Yeah. How was that? And did you see Mbappe? Who else did you see? Did you, <laughs> were you in Qatar? I was, I was actually hanging out with Mbappe's father. So I'm no not, was, way. I was she hanging out with his dad. Yeah, his I dad just is asked. So awesome. <laughs> cool, Mbappe. He's awesome. Shingi, are you being for real? Yeah, yeah. I was oh, hanging wow. out with him. I was <laughs> hanging out with Gilom Horai, the Premier League striker. That's that's who um, actually called me to say um, we would love you to be part of the song. <gasps> wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And oh, um, you guys do talk. Fan. Well, he's a fan. He 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 was a fan of my music from the Noisettes, and he's also when he heard that I was doing the um, the solo record and started up my um, own label, okay. Zim, Zimtron Records. Um, he was just like, what can I do in any way to help and now that you're free now that the shackles off can we write together I would love to write with you so yeah um so when you were signed with, with those the shackles yes <laughs> okay so he was like now that the shackles are off they're gone yeah now, oh. that, now that the shackles off that you're I can free ride with <laughs> Freedom. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so so I, I met him in 2018 or 2019 when I managed to get out of that of that deal, and uh, I started my own label with the help of a really amazing uh, small team. And he, yeah, he flew me out to Switzerland. He's got this amazing, um, amazing studio in this lovely converted barn country house that he has, and he was like, I've been doing sports since I could walk, but he he actually comes from a very creative family. He's from Reunion, which is um, sadly, but hopefully I'm sure not for long, still a French colony off the East Coast of Africa. So yeah, it's not far from Madagascar, Mauritius. So he's so he's African, you know, but r raised in um, in Europe, a bit like me. So yeah, he was really excited about um, the stuff that I was doing. He was excited about the collaborations that I did, you know, um, Hey Hey and all these other collaborations. So yeah, we wrote together. And then when um, he got given the, um, I want to say tender, because people keep using, people yes. keep using that. But when he got, yeah. When, In when music, it was, do we call it tender? No, I, I, just, I don't know why I'm calling it that. I don't know what okay. calling it. For, for the sake of this interview, let, let's just call it the tender. Let's when he got it, the tender. Because you, yeah, you, yeah. So when, so when he got the tender call to create um, this African anthem for the World Cup, he had to put a team together of what he felt were the best musicians um, on the continent that could all represent not only their own nations, but flag the whole continent high and, and, and cheer, the, cheer the players on. So yeah, we had um, an amazing artist from Senegal. Um, obviously we had um, um, Guillaume, he's from uh, Reunion, who I just mentioned, Premier League striker, now turned musician in retirement, which I think is dope. Wow. And yeah, and then you had me representing Zim, or the Bantu remix. The Bantu remix. And then, yeah, and then you had uh, an amazing Congolese artist and Manifest from Ghana, who's also performed here at Haifa with myself and Ten Diamond in 2018 in Haifa. So it was a really amazing opportunity and people are still loving the song. And, um, and uh, it looks like it may be also extended to be used as the anthem for the African Cup of Nations. Oh, well done, because yeah. it was so good. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. So I've left a bit of a gap on either side in case we have to cut it out because it hasn't been announced yet, but I found that out yesterday. So yeah, apparently they're going to use it for the Africa. Oh wow, that's beautiful. Yeah. Well done, Shingi. You yeah. are not stopping. The shackles are off and go your movie. <laughs> I'll make up for lost time. And you know, it, it wasn't all bad. Like I got to travel. I got to have, you know, I got to have so, such an incredible music, pr professional musical foundation. Yeah. And, and you know, 
I guess the only thing that was maybe missing was having more creative experiences on the motherland and actually ensuring that the success of the Noisettes and Shingi translated to driving prosperity and helping to build a creative industry here, which is what I'm finally getting the chance to do now, which is why I'm here. Which is why because you're here. Because that's not something that often when you are signed to these companies, you kind of feel like you're their property. So if you say, oh, I wanna go and do shows in Africa, you know, and obviously that was also before- It has to be directly beneficial to them. So you can't- them, Which yeah. that means they are still, that, but then that means they are still making money and reaping the rewards of you know of our of, of, of our talents of our skills and it's 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 really beginning to turn around now so so that um a lot of you know a lot of the um the growing african creative industries are beginning to think more independently it's very important african ownership black ownership is yeah. really really important in what i do because um i still don't own the rights to the noisettes well you um, still don't material but that mm. doesn't bother me at all because so when when the songs are being sold and are being played you don't get to benefit any any I'll penny an off that i'll give you an example yeah. no it's, it's 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 not that i don't get um any penny from my publishing yeah. it's just that um they own the rights to the images they own the rights to um it's it's not something I want to go into now because I don't want to bore people that don't really know the technicalities, much the complexity of the music industry. But it's very much set up to benefit a few um, a few families that keep the wealth in the same um, kind of place. It's it, it it's now come out, you know, thankfully how much of a, no a monopoly the creative industries are and how most of the people that are benefiting those industries i.e people of color have not in the past been able to benefit in the way that we should but that's all changing now so i'm actually glad i went through that experience because it taught me a lot and i wouldn't have learned about how you know how the mechanics of it are and it wouldn't give me the wouldn't give me that drive to not only get the poetic justice but like i said to, to restore the remunerative justice that we deserve by inspiring Remunerative justice. justice. I love that. Remunerative yeah. justice that we deserve. And that's why I'm always inspiring and trying to encourage people. Yes, we can partner with companies in the West. Partner, but know your worth. Know You're not how selling to negotiate. Your, your rights. Okay. Know how to negotiate and ensure that you, you know, you have enough ownership so that you can pass you can pass it on. Um, as I say that for a long time, I, I've been a follower of your music. This collaboration that you recently dropped with Winky D, Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe. How did that come about? Like, um, who reached out to who? What happened? Yeah, so I've been a huge fan. In fact, like our whole family is a huge fan of Winks ever since. Um, ever since Abracadabra, I've just been like a lot, like diehard fan. Um, collaboration is really important for me and I feel like it's going to be a big part of our kind of you know revival and the success story um, of us um, as Zimbabweans putting our sound on the world stage and so um, yeah Banda uh, sorry Winky, Winky and I have been friends on Instagram so uh, yeah I think it, it happened in the DMs and then down Banda, in the DMs down in the DMs <laughs> yeah, things took place <laughs> messages were exchanged voice notes were exchanged and um, and then you know Winky's team and my team here who have been absolutely incredible just did their best to make it happen um, we actually you know began working on those ideas that led to Zibad Zimbabwe uh, about 18 months ago. And then we shot the video on my last trip here, which is about which is about six or seven months ago. And how were you guys um, so quiet about it? Because I've been seeing, you know, the collaborations being dropped and we knew nothing, not even pictures, nothing. Honey, we were all sworn to secrecy, my darling. <laughs> and you know what, I actually feel like even if I wasn't, I would still, I still respect the fact that, you know, the way that his team likes to do things, um, because, you know, some people have had experiences before where people have leaked 
you know, um, work that they were going to put out and share. And, you know, I know what it's like to invest so much money and time in something and for it to get leaked or for people to kind of like over opinionate on it before it's even had the legs to crawl and walk and to, you know, get into the public atmosphere. I think it's really important as artists for us to respect each other's processes and to, you know, um, to, to, to let each other do things the way we do things. Because that's how you get the best, the best collabs happen when you do you, boo, and I do me. You know, this this thing of like artists feeling like they have to sound like someone else or have to compromise, over compromise their looks, their sound, their art, their talent. I would really urge and say that is not something that I feel will sustain and propel that content in the West. So you have to be original to, to who you are. In America, they, 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 they have so much R&B singers who are incredible. They have so many um, of their amazing own strands of, you know, of, of, of African-American music, which also still references African music. But when they hear music from Africa or from African artists, they love it when we're inspired by them. But I think they want something that they don't have. I guess which, which is, is why the, the, the Nigerian um, like, uh, sound has really broken out. That Afrofusion has really broken out because it's original to, to them. Nigerians will still sound Nigerian on their music. Yes. That's the difference. With Pigeon English and yeah. Or yes, or yeah. whether they're, you know, whether they're Igbo or Ijo, whether you're a Yemi Alade, whether you're uh Tiwa Savage. But you can you can differentiate the different voices yes. there. You can and they're you know they're also very proud about their, you know, the the more in the the the, the, the other aspects of their of their of their ethnicities. They'll be like, hey, this is an Ibo viable, this is an Ijo viable, this is a Delta viable, this is a you know, Ibo Ibobo state vibe. So, so we need to do more of that as Zimbabweans, right? Absolutely. If yeah. you if 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 you try to assimilate um, you'll often find that um, they've already they already have that there. Yes. So actually, what they really want is is you. They want you in all of your beautiful uniqueness, whether you're from Manika land or whether you're from Mashingo and yeah. Mashingo. The rhythms in this in the in the in the languages that we have in 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 the su Southern African Bantu are amazing. Some of us have the clicks. Some of us have so many different ways of rapping, of singing, of, um, you know, infusing um, traditional instruments. And if you look at someone like Ja Preja, it's that's why he's a big reason why he's crossed over. And he's got a massive, you know, African following. Yes. Nigeria, Tanzania, in, 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 in America, in the UK, in parts of Europe, because he was not ashamed to channel the Mbira vibes or whatever to own he felt it. like. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously you have to do what inspires you as an artist, but, but there's something about being authentic and genuine that puts you in good stead if you want to be here for the long run. Thank you so much. And that's a TED talk from Shingi. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> it has helped you know, someone. Uh, yes. I've been looking forward to this so much. I was like, let me put in as much as possible. You can always add edit. And that way, even if you use 20% of it, it's still going to be lit. I know, hey. But then before you go, <laughs> um, we need interpretation or for you to break down for us the lyrics for Zimba, Zimbabwe. Uh, what were you trying to articulate or to say? So what um, what I feel is being achieved by my part in the song is that I'm saying, so listen to me softly, time to rise up my family. What you thinking? Did you miss me? Sing it with me, is this the land? I'm talking about Zimbabwean unity, which equals African unity, which equals um, a better future for all of us if we want to heal, if we want to, reclaim our sovereignty, our rights. Um, for me, I was severed from um, connections to the land. That's why I say Mwana Wevo at the end of it, because it's such a beautiful statement to me because a lot of us grew up in council flats or grew up in concrete, glass, all of these- Outside of- These off. synthesized environments, man, you know? So you're like, you're like this wild, beautiful bundle flower or like a rose trying to burst through the cracks of the concrete. And, um, you know, somebody trying to sort of often suppress what's beautiful and what's raw about the raw diamond that you are. So um, for me, I was singing it from the perspective 
as a diasporan, we we didn't get to grow up with even having the ability to plant, uh, you know, mil cobs or eat organic, amazing food. Costs of living are so high that, you know, we don't, I think sometimes the grass is always greener. And what I was singing about was that I don't want the land that um, our parents' generation and the generations before cried for and died for. I just don't want that fight to be in vain. So let's make something beautiful of this place because we do have, you know, we do have certain freedoms that a lot of African co countries are still, nations are still in the infancy and on their way to getting, you know. Um, I know things aren't perfect, things aren't rosy, but we can't go to that next level unless the diaspora and the people at home get together and make a beautiful international Zim baby. That's just what has to happen. That's what the Nigerians have done. The, 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 the Ghanaians very much embrace their diaspora and vice versa. That's what the Indians have done, vice versa. So I feel like we have this unique opportunity to um, revive what is really, really cool about Zim culture. Don't be ashamed of it because it's popping, it's lit. And trust me, when I'm in the UK, people can't get enough of it. So to come here in and their see- faces. Yeah, to come here and see people, you know, not being sure if they can confident about can be confident about it, it breaks my heart. So the negativity, that is what okay. I am, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm I am achieving in that song is saying, time to rise up my family, listen to me softly, let's get together and yeah, let's do it, man. Wonderful, beautiful yeah. Shingi. Thank you so You're much. Welcome. You're welcome. So um what can we expect from you? You have your record label that's popping right yeah and yes. uh, you're dropping new music i know yeah. you have a collaboration with another local artist that's coming and yeah. uh are we not going to get the name out of you um i'm not at liberty to say right now just also because i want to protect that artist process as well like i said earlier um but yeah there's going to be an uh, a song that i'm so excited about that's going to be dropping in uh march and um and I'm very excited about that. I'm excited about more collaborations. I'd love to meet more uh, Zim artists. Um, I'm really impressed by the levels of entrepreneurship here in Zim. You guys are literally just so freaking like nonstop. It's, 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 you're relentlessly just applying the Zim intelligence, knowledge. People are working, skill. right? People are working. But now what we need to do is just keep working together more, keep partnering with each other. Those collaborations, and, yeah. And, and begin to enjoy it. Because you know what, it's been a, it's been a lot of the of 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 the downturn times. There's been a lot of challenges, and the challenges won't go away. But when we always compare it to what the other generations faced, we have more liberties than any of the other generations had during colonialism, during slavery. So um, we have to pick ourselves up off the floor and know that it's our time. So uh, one more thing, I was so, so happy um, when I was reading Adele's story and uh, she was like, you were one of the people that she acknowledged, yeah. you know, yeah. um, that you were part of her process. Yeah. And it's beautiful because it's not every day that a black woman, you know, is acknowledged and, you know, part of the story or the bigger story. Um, you guys were neighbors with yeah. Adele. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. We live next. We well, pretty much lived together. We we're in each other's lives for a good um, a good five to ten years. Um, wow! Yeah, we before she blew up. School. Yeah, before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and before I was signed. You know, <laughs> when I still had a norm, when I still had a job, or well, three jobs at the time, and was still going to college. Um, we both went to the Brit School, which is a performing arts and technology college, and um, yeah, I had so many jam sessions at my house. I was. Oh, you host people. Yeah, man. Wow. I'd have the best house parties ever. Just, it, it, it would just be lit. So, some of the most amazing musicians from, yeah, you know, South London and East London. In fact, you know, London would just come around to ours. And, and her mum is also um, an artist. So she kind of, you know, would let her come and, 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 and hang out. So I, th I, I actually feel it's really, really important that we do acknowledge each other um, because mu in musical lineage, it's usually, uh, black women that get left out. So yes. I actually, um, I'm really grateful for her to have done that. And I think we also need to do that the same for each other. So, you know, black female artists coming up now, don't forget to, to rep your female 
black artists and artists that have come before you because otherwise they get written out. So, yeah. Shingi, this has been amazing. Thank you so much. Um, I know that we bumped into each other last year and yes. the, the, there was the one song, No Fear, that was that I was, you know, like just absolutely loving. And well, to have you here, part of the show, it's totally amazing. Thank you for supporting, you know, and also for supporting the new work. This really is the era where we are changing up the game, as I said in No Fear. So it's an honor to be part of your show, Candy. And uh, before you go, um, I just have lyrics to a song. So I want you to guess which song that is, okay? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Who's the artist? Oh, I love the song Nemam Sasa. Um, Chiwoniso. Yes, you got it right. <laughs> Well oh, done. It's, it's, it's morning. Oh my god. Wow. Oh my god. <laughs> These are the shoulders that I'm talking about. These are the shoulders. Oh, beautiful. Yes. Thank you so much for making wow. time. <laughs> You're welcome. Thanks for having me. And yeah, let's 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 have some fun. Maybe we'll do Garvas again. Another yes, time. definitely we will. <laughs> Thank you so much. There you have it, Candid with Candy with the impeccable Shingai Shoniwa. This has been amazing. Make sure that you subscribe and also that you share. Um, yeah, remember to pray, to keep trusting God, keep believing. I am V Candy. 